I know we have children, but um, would it be okay if we include them into our testimony sharings of hearing uh, what, what God is doing in, because oftentimes children are not aware of what's happening in the adult's world, and maybe they don't really care about it. <laughs> but there's something about hearing the words hearing the testimonies of God's goodness, and as our children hear it, um, and they receive, and they partake it, but they also receive it. And, and that's something that I want to share too. Uh, but, but before that, I just want to acknowledge, I just want to acknowledge um, how God is amazing, right? And not that I have to say it, but we all know, but God is amazing. Um, I love Thanksgiving. How many of you enjoyed your Thanksgiving time with your family and all, right? We had the most Asian thing, uh, Asian Thanksgiving, no turkey, no, uh, even, not even chicken. We actually want to go, was gonna, we're going to order a Korean chicken, uh, but they closed. Um, it's like, it's a non-Asian thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we, instead, we had sushi. <laughs> Uh, we, sushi, uh, we had sushi, and uh, there's a great place, by the way, just a sushi place in, in Upland. If you want to know, top quality sushi. If you want to know, just come to me. Um, and they said, when I went to pick it up on Thanksgiving morning, they said, yeah, we will open on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, <laughs> New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, we, you know, Thanksgiving is not an American holiday. Right? Right? It's a, it's a kingdom lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's an everyday thing. We do give thanks to God every single day. We continuously uh, live in that place in the reality of God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's kindness, His generosity, His, 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 all that, all that in the kingdom of God, we live in it. So thanks, giving thanks to God is a lifestyle thing. Every morning, the new mercies, and we give thanks to God, Amen. right? Every night we go to bed, we give thanks to God. Every moment of our lives, no matter what happens, and there are things happen, right? Yes. But regardless of the situations, we give thanks to the Lord because He is worthy of our praises. And we celebrate God together as family. And that's what we're going to do. We do it differently. And I love that we... How many of you love the food? I kind of like this, eating food first and then the, you know, but I know. Good for the worship team, good for us. Um, but um, we're going to do that. Um, you know, this week I talked to a couple people and um, uh, s some of you guys said, you know, I really need to think about, I really need to think about uh, which testimony that I need to share. And, and I, it really blessed my heart um, because there are many things that God has done um, that, that we give thanks to God for. Uh, or maybe, you know, we just, we just waited until the last moment. What do I need to share? In panic, right? I didn't really think about it. Uh, but, you know, but really, like, it, we had a lot of things that we want to share. Um, and, and in sharing, there's a building up. Right? Our sharing uh, moments will, will build up um, our, the body of Christ together. Um, so we're going to do that later on. Um, but, and, and there's something that I want us to do. Um, every, after each person, and I want all of us to share, and we have a big group, but we want us, all of us to share. Um, after each person shares, I want us to respond um, with God is good, and he will do it again, Amen. right? Because that's what testimony is. We first acknowledge the goodness of God, because everything that we go through in life, everything that we go through, just, just about anything in this world is rooted in the very powerful truth unshakable truth that God is good. Amen. It all goes back to that, right? Yes. So 
we're gonna we're gonna say God is good. Everybody say God is good. But the other part of the testimony is the testimony as it as it the meaning of that is he will do it again. Amen. So what he has done in the past, what he is doing right now, he will do it again in the future. Yes. What what God has done in in Jillian's life, what God has done in Barb's life, what God has done in Vanessa's life, he will do it again. Amen. Not in their lives only, but in my life as well, in our lives as well. Yes. So God is good and he will do it again. Right? We're going to do that. Um, but the part of this is we do it together. Right? Because testimony, giving thanks has always been a communal activity. In Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you. It's always been a communal activity. Um, throughout the scripture, we see over and over again where the whole Israel come together after God has done something for them. And together, they give thanks to God by building an altar together, by worshiping, praising God together, by dedicating their lives together. So it's not as much as it is an individual thing, it is a it's a communal thing. It's a community thing. It's the body of Christ thing. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful and powerful expression of what heaven actually looks like because there's an ongoing praise and worship happening together, collectively, the whole kingdom, right? And, and it's, it's, it's what we do by sharing testimonies. We do that here on earth. So in, 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 the, in the way that we bring heaven on earth and we uh, release what heaven looks like to everyone's life and beyond, right? So it is a communal thing. Um, but also it connects us to the generations before us and it connects us to generation after us right again it's a communal thing right now but it's a communal thing as a part of eternity in the history of God right in the Joshua in the book of Joshua God commands Joshua to have 12 men pick up stones from the, the Jordan River right as they cross hey uh, tell 12 men to pick up 12 stones from the river, from the middle of the, the river, um, and, and to build an altar, right? Um, and these stones were set to point generations um, to who God was and what God has done um, for Israel. Um, and it says, these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever, right? These stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. It kept them aware of who God is. It kept them aware of uh, what God has done, and it built their spirit to trust God even more for the things to come, right? It connects the generation of people before and now to the generation after, generations after, right? So what you are doing here today, what we will be doing here today by sharing testimonies, it not only connects us to what God has done in the past, but what you will share today will be the seed that's been planted into the ground that will give life and the fruit for the generations to come, not just in life as one community, but beyond life as one community, and ultimately to the city, to the region, and beyond, right? So what we do today is not a ch church Sunday thing. Can we just agree with that? Yeah. It's not a one day, you know, eating brunch and it's, oh, I feel good, let's talk about God. No, it's not that. It has significant uh, imp uh, 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 impact, thank you significant impact into the generations and what we will share today who knows who will reap uh, the fruit out of that 
right? And that's what we do. That's what we will do, right? Amen? But another thing that I want to share is, is that giving thanks or sharing testimonies, giving thanks is actually a prophetic act, right? Um, your response to a situation today will determine your outcome in the future, right? Psalm 100 says, come into his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Right? Come into his presence. Enter his gates. Right? So the key words, come into, enter, with thanksgiving, we build the, the whole picture of this. What are you coming into? What are you entering into? Right? What our thanksgiving, what we do is we actually create a dwelling place, a home for God. Everybody say home. home. For God. How many of you know that DNA of Life S1, the first thing is being a home for God and home for people, right? It's a creating a dwelling place for the, pre for the presence of God so that he would feel complete had the complete freedom to do whatever that he wants to do and for each and every one of us to come into that place to receive what God wants to do and become part of the family yeah. right so everybody say we're at home yeah. right so we come into and we enter into a dwelling place created by our thanksgiving yeah. by our testimony just declaring his goodness and kindness so that in this place that his presence come and he dwell continuously, right? Amen. When we choose to give thanks, we open wide the get gates of heaven and with access into his dwelling place where we can partner with his kingdom. We can partner with our Father where there's nothing um, impossible for God and we walk in w w with, this, with this amazing heavenly resources with a possibility that the world cannot fathom and what happens in the kingdom of God is not just here and now I mean we live what like 80 years, 90 years 100 years it's a fraction of eternity right but Instead of living that fraction, we get to partner and live in eternity where we can actually see from all the way back to the creation to all the way back to the end of, end of time, right? And that's the, that's the dwelling place of God's presence. But the other side of giving thanks, as we know, is complain, right? How many of us complain sometimes, um, you know? We do, you know, we grumble, we complain, you know, about, about the weather, you know, we grumble about gas prices, we grumble, you know, complain about people, we, you know, all these things. And, and sometimes it's just so quick, we don't even recognize it, but it just come out so quick. But just as much as Thanksgiving created a dwelling place for God, our grumbling, our complaining creates a home for something else, right? And when we do that, we actually come into that place, come into that home that I don't want to be in, but we, we get stuck in that place. And how many of you know that when you start complaining, everything becomes negative, right? You immediately, your, 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 your lens become you know, so crooked that you find faults in people, right? It is just like that, right? So it's really, really important that we live a lifestyle of thanksgiving because the home, the dwelling place of, of complaint and grumbling and all that stuff is only to still kill and destroy, where the dwelling place of God is about giving life, restoring hope, you know, healing your heart, and strengthening and, and, 
launching you into, into your destiny. That's the home that we want to live in. That's the home that God has invited us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Right? And that's the home that He wants to continuously multiply so that people could come in and experience the kingdom of God in that place that we create with, in partnership with the Lord so that we become bigger family. And I'm not talking about numbers. A part, of the, part of it is also numbers. But it's not for the growth of, we, oh, we want to become a mega church. No, it's, it's become a big family. Right? So choosing Thanksgiving leads us into um, the very gates of heaven where transformation takes place. Right? Even if your situation doesn't change, and, I, and how many of you know, sometimes things just stay the same. Like, holy moly, when, God? Right? And you ask God continuously, you cry out to God continuously, and you get mad as, you know, at some point. Uh, but still, nothing changes. But yet, even in that, choosing to, and let me just say, choosing to give thanks will shift you to operate from heaven. Right? And that's the life that God has called us to live. And sometimes it's a struggle. It is easier said than done, but it is the life that we are called to live. Um, for the Lord is good. Again, coming back to the goodness of the Father. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. God is good. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do, there's a reason why this thing is here. Okay? Previous years, we had this here at the center, but we had also had someone with a mic moving around, and nobody came to the front. <laughs> I remember that because I was with the mic. And I was walking around, and I got my you know wa wa workout done that day, <laughs> which was very you know I have a low minimum uh, goal, <laughs> five steps and yay. Uh, so there's a reason why this is here, because I want us to, I want all of us to come out and declare it. I want us to be the people of boldness and courage. You might not like standing in front of people and talking, you know, the, the public speaking, you know, all that stuff. You might not like it, but there's a, we are born into the kingdom of God in the boldness of faith, right? God did not call us to be a shy people. You can't be shy in other places, but not today. <laughs> be bold, be courageous, declare his goodness and kindness, you know, right here at the center um, well, we, it's, it's not you sharing it, but it's actually you being the mouthpiece of his goodness and kindness. Amen. So put your hands upon your ha uh, hands, your yeah, hand on your heart. Tell yourself, be courageous. Be very courageous. Right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, the other thing is, um, as, a, as a ground rule, as a rule for us, um, I've said this before. We're going to share a testimony from this year alone. <laughs> okay? All right? So tell people next to you, 2023 only. 2023 only. Okay? You're, maybe you want to share a backstory of it. Don't. <laughs> you can share it next time. You know? You can grab someone. By the way, I have a backstory to it. It goes back to 19, I know, but 2023. 20, and the last thing is, let's do it within three minutes. Okay? Maybe four minutes. No, three minutes. 
Maybe four minutes is what you're thinking right now, but no, three minutes, <laughs> okay? Um, so first, be courageous, all right? Come out, share. Um, for you, for, like for, for those of you who can come out here, we'll bring the mic to you. Um, but everybody else, come out. Um, and 2023 20, only, and three minutes. Max, all right, if you go past uh, three minutes, someone's going to come and tackle you <laughs> and drag you out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we won't do that. We love you. Um, but we will go like, uh, all right. Um, so are we ready? Are we ready? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let me just pray for us first. Um, Father God, we thank you so much again for your goodness and kindness. Thank you so much for tying us into this beautiful family that each and every one of us in this place are so precious to you and so precious to, to us as well because um, we're, 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 we're family. So let us celebrate together family style. But... Uh, so whatever that we share also ties us to the generations before us and after us into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So I am going to stay on this side. You can come um, and share. And again, what are we going to say after each person share? God is good, and he will do it again. All right. So Mike is all yours. I understand the, oh, there you go. The first one, yes. Short is the key word. I am grateful for the fact that God birthed me into a generational family of praise. This year, someone found in an old trunk my grandfather's hymn book that he wrote with sheep notes. And he was a Pentecostal worship leader in the mountains of Arkansas. And he taught all his kids to sing those. And I learned those songs. And they sent me a very scratchy recording that's getting fixed. And I'm just grateful for the blessings of my house that I receive. Thank you. God is good. And he will do it again. share before so many of the testimonies from this year. One of them is most recent. My dryer went out and I needed a new one and I just prayed and I was like, God, I need a new dryer. Posted it on Facebook, went to sleep asking if anybody had one because mine needed to be repaired for $300. And um, I said, does anybody have a dryer? Mine went out and the lady met, when I woke up that morning, a lady messaged me and said, actually we have one. It's maybe a year old. You can have it. And I was like, do you want me to give you something for it? She was like, no, you can have it. But that was like a huge answer to prayer because God always like whatever we have need of, we just ask. That's what the word says, right? And so then a week later or so, she said, hey, I know it's last minute, but you can get the dryer tomorrow. And I thought, oh, my gosh, how am I going to get the dryer? So I reached out to like Vanessa and just other people like, can anybody help me? Didn't have anybody with a truck. And I said, God, I know you gave me this dryer. I know you will help me figure out how to get it home. And um, the morning I text her, I said, hey, I'm still trying to work on somebody helping me. And she said, wait, where do you live? And we were four minutes away. She said, we'll just bring it to you. So then they brought me the dryer. And so um, that's just one of like so many stories I have about God's goodness to me this year in 2023. So whatever you have need of, ask and he will do it. Hello. <laughs> um, so I haven't been to church in 11 years. Wow. And I met Maisha <laughs> a few weeks ago. And I just feel like my mom has been, I lost my mom three years ago. And um, I've always had a special connection with Jesus and God. And my kids also have a special relationship with God. And I met her in one of the most annoying events, probably, <laughs> but we connected instantly, and here I am, and this place feels very special, and I'm 
really grateful. Um, and Maisha was sharing so many um, favors of God that she's had, and I'm like, whoa, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> um, but she was being so authentic, and I just I was really grateful for sh for what she shared because then I asked her, what church do you go to? I'd like to come with you. Um, and she invited me here, and here we are, and I'm already experiencing so much favor of God just being here and other things that are happening in my life. So, thank you. God is good. Um, I feel so blessed. I know that there's so many things that God has done for me, but the one that's kind of on my heart right now is um, I always pray for community. And this church does community so well. But I, I just see more facets of it where it's like forming in new ways. And one of the ways is that we form like a walking group. And it was just it just blessed my heart to see everyone connect with each other and even to see the men get together and like huddle up and talk about going on a walk and, and doing things together and doing life together. And it's just another way that we can share God's love. So that just, like just seeing that blesses my heart. So that's what I'm grateful for. God is good. This year has been quite a challenge for my family, but one thing that I'm thankful for is God's consistency. He's there all the time. Yes. Recently, I've, I've experienced visitations from the Holy Spirit that I never had in my life. I've been a Christian for 58 years, and I never had, I, I knew Jesus was in me, the Holy Spirit, but the manifestation of the audible voice of God has hit me this year. And one that recently happened was, I was, I was awakened in the middle of the night, not startled, not scared, just peacefully set up. And I didn't have to use my arms because I, I deal with Parkinson's each day. But this time I didn't have to use my arms to sit straight up in bed. And there was a light shining at the foot of our bed that reminded me of the uh, northern lights, but not the color, but the brightness and the brilliancy of it. And the Lord said, I am stirring up the waters of your heart like the angel stood up the pool of Bethesda. And in that, you will be made whole. Come ye therefore unto me, all ye that labor heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. God is good, and he will do it again. I'm trying to avoid eye contact. <laughs> As if like I'm pressuring you to speak. No, that's not what I'm doing. So I'm I'm looking at the blank right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't you. think I had anything because 2023 was kind of a rough year for me. But the Lord said, "Well, you do have something," and I I just I thank God in the midst of everything and for everybody that maybe you aren't seeing what you need to see or want to see right now. I'm thanking God for the keeping power of God. Amen. It's absolutely incredible. Amen. It's it's just an amazing, amazing experience to walk through a fire or whatever it is and and have that just continually choosing the Lord and have him be right there with you. Mm -hmm. And I had this uh, picture during worship, and it was a road, and it was probably for me, but I'll, I'll share it for whoever it might help. And it, it was this road that was, there wasn't people on the road, there wasn't anybody I was walking on the road, or, but the Holy Spirit just came up next to me and grabbed my hand and we began to walk on the road together, and I really feel like that that is a, 
prophetic word actually for this coming year. Mm -hmm. I feel like people who have felt alone or who have felt like, you know, what they're asking for, they haven't seen yet, that the Holy Spirit is about ready to manifest himself in an incredible way. And that he is, if he's not healing you right now, he's keeping you right now. And he's always there. Amen. And never give up. Amen. <laughs> God is good, and he will do it again. Yeah, I wanted to follow up with what, she's, what uh, Christine shared. Uh, for many years, but especially this year, my wife and I were looking for a new church, and you know, one of the we, we had specific um, thing characteristics we wanted. One was something local because the church we were going to was so far away, and this is like ten minutes from our house. <laughs> and and what Christine was sharing, I wanted to re-experience the Holy Spirit in a deeper and greater way. Um, yeah, uh, since I've been here about a little under three months now, and just. Um, like my mind is being opened and it's like when I first believed in Jesus and just the hope and the possibilities, like, like the spiritual imagination is just increasing. And of course the, the amazing sense of community, but uh, I'm just so thankful uh, that uh, every time I've come here, especially on Sundays, like, like Christian was saying, I feel like the Holy Spirit is here. It's right next to me and it's leading me and I'm experiencing the Holy Spirit in such deeper and newer ways that I haven't in years and especially this year. So. So I'm so thankful for that. Thank you. Hello, church. Hello. Um, well, I haven't been here a little while because I moved to Riverside a couple of years back, but this was this is still my church home. Um, anyhow, I just want to explain that. Um, I have, a, I have a cat, and you wouldn't think it's a blessing, but I love this cat, and, and she sleeps on my tummy, and she's just like, she's just such a blessing, but this is going to kind of represent <laughs> what I did. I undertook a new job this year, because I had retired, but I came out of retirement for this new job that I, I took, and it's in Upland of all places, so I go to Riverside, and God moves me back to Upland. Um, <laughs> so what happened is I end up staying with my mother who lives in Upland and she's 85 years old so it's a blessing again it's a blessing she needs me and she occasionally tumbles and things that I'm right there so it's nice but also I have these children that I work with now and they are um, special needs children and the first day I said oh god no no this isn't gonna work out this is like really difficult but they grabbed my heart, these children, and so it's been such a blessing. And what happened, and I'll just say quickly that I, I worked for 22 years at a district where I had no favor. I was like the last one to be picked on the team always. <laughs> I got to this place, and I am number one favor. I don't know why. <laughs> They've asked me to lead groups. I'm like, what? Um, God just unhinged all this favor on me and I and the blessings that I get to give back to these children who are severe to moderate uh, moderate to severe um, autism and whatnot so it's just a, a beautiful year and a difficult year but it doesn't mean that it's not a wonderful blessing so thank you Okay, uh, so this is my third time coming to Life Plus One. So I don't have my name tag, but I'm Rich. Uh, I'm Rich. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just, uh, I'm going to talk about how God has just shared his love with me throughout this year. Um, starting in April, I went through a lot of trials, um, lots of fam family health scares from both mother and father. Um, not knowing where my career is going, um, personal issues, relationship issues, um, a lot of things hit me at once and I was really confused because I thought, God, I'm following you. Like why, 
Like, why, why am I being punished? But I thought, over time I realized that it wasn't God punishing me. He was just reminding me how much like, I need to lean on to him more, how much I need to trust in him, how much I need to put my anxieties towards him. Because no matter how much of a good planner I am, that's like pretty much my job, but I can't rely on my skill sets. It's, it's God who's sovereign over all. So this summer I've learned how to draw closer to God or see his love through the community that has been poured onto me. Although I was away, there was brothers and sisters who just contacted me, asking if I'm okay, praying with me, going through a book series with me, and I was on the other side of the states of, of, of California. And uh, I was so encouraged that how much like I can do all things through Christ. That I, by his, by his strength, I was able to like complete like a tough modern, or excuse me, a Spartan race, a half marathon, reminding myself that I can do all things through him. When I finished that race, I didn't finish it thinking like I completed the race as a runner. I reminded myself that I'm enduring as a Christian. And as, as I place my anxieties to, as I place my anxieties to him, he has blessed me in so many ways. He's brought my family closer together. I have well, a new position, thank God. Karen and I are back together. And for this Thanksgiving, many years, I've never seen this, but my family prayed together. We all held hands and prayed. And they didn't know how to pray, but they were so supportive and saw how Karen and I just have the love for Christ that they wanted to experience that as well. Even the following morning, my dad did not want to eat breakfast until we prayed. <laughs> so I see God's love, not just through what he, give, what he gives, but also through our trials. So I just say this, that there will come times in your life where you will be crawling. You will wonder like, why am I a Christian? But I encourage you to lean on to Christ harder because it's on those moments where you're truly loved by Christ and you'll look back and see how much of a wonderful God he is and what he has helped you overcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve, and I've only been here um, several times with my wife and daughter, and I want to thank Chris for inviting me here. So um, I am a pastor, and in my previous ministry, um, I stumbled out of it very hurt and came here, and um, it's been just the three visits has just been a wonderful time of worship. I've been really healed through the worship through uh, JP and the word. And um, uh, this place just has made me feel very peaceful at rest. Um, I don't know if it's, it's you know, Holy Spirit definitely, but I just felt lack of politics, no politics, and just very different. And Maya Angelou said, um, you know, people will um, forget what you uh, said and what you did, but she said um, she will. People will never forget how you made them feel. I know you butchered that, but and I think uh, as I go back into ministry uh, later in December, um, I think life is one. I will always remember this is a community where I felt peace. I felt rest. I didn't feel the hustle and bustle of ministry, um, and 
no politics. And I really did feel like people say the church is a place that's uh, for sinners and a hospital for the sick. And I really feel like Life is One was a hospital for me. And it has healed me because of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you for the aura that is at this church. I think it's the leadership, the DNA. And I haven't felt this at many churches. So thank you very much. Hello, I'm Ashton. Um, one thing I love about God is just him calling you out, calling me out specifically. I think a few weeks ago, actually, um, when I started the school year, this quarter, I started in end of September. Um, so before that, actually, I broke up with my girlfriend, right? And I was in a rough, kind of a rough spot. And when I started the school year, I was like, we broke up on a good note, or I was like, like, we didn't have any beef with each other. I just didn't want a relationship. That's what I told her. So we were, like, in and off as, like, a friends. But then, beginning of the school year, um, I just checked up on her. I'm like, hey, how are you, right? And so she didn't respond back to me for, like, three days. So I was a little upset. She, she actually told me, like, she was doing good, um, busy. And then, she, so she, she, said, she, thought, she said that to me three days after her text her. And I was a little upset that she responded three days later. Right. Actually, I wasn't even expecting to respond at all because, you know, I ended the relationship with her, right? But, <laughs> so I'm shocked, okay? But then I was also shocked because I didn't know what to say. So I tell my friends that I don't like texting because um, I'm more of a caller. I like talking in person or calling. That's why I have like 2,000 messages unread. <laughs> but um, I just didn't know what to say. And so I left her unread for a month. And between that month, between like end of September to the end of October, my minister at school was like, have you gone back to her yet? And I was like, no. But I'll get back to her in December, and I'll see her in person. My friend was like, have you gone back to her yet? I'm like, no. And my other friend said the same thing, and I just kept saying no. I kept making excuses saying, I'll get back to her in December, thinking that I would get back to her in December, which I will plan to do, <laughs> okay? No, I will, I will plan to, I will get back to her in December. But it kept, like, this message kept getting to my mind. I'm like, what's going on? And then one day, I was studying at night. It was Thursday night. I was studying, and I fell asleep on my desk. I had a dream. And then God just told me. He's like, have you gone back to her yet? <laughs> right? I was like, dang. So I woke up from that feeling like I felt so real. Like I felt like God was telling me something. He kept on telling me, like, why haven't you gone back to her yet? And so he was calling me out in that moment because I was making a excuse saying, I'll get back to her, but I just never did. And so I woke up, and I gave her a call. I was like, okay, I'll get back to you. She didn't, she didn't pick up until like the next day, and then, and then we, we talked about it. But I was so glad that God just gave me that courage to like call her back because I was talking to her for a few minutes, and she told me all the good news was happening. Because when we were dating, she wasn't going to church. Um, she was Catholic, but she didn't really go to church at all. She did grow up maybe sometimes, but um, I was encouraged to go to church, but she didn't really come with me. But... The best part was when I called her, I said, how are you? And then she said, I, I, went, I started going to church. And that just made my month, like, early, early this year. It made my month just hearing the good news happening to her. Um, and the best part was, this is a church I told her to go to. So, our, so I'm from San Diego. I was from San Diego. And we have a, our campus ministry. There are different organizations around, you know, California. And so she went to the one that I told her to go to, Alpha Omega. And... She was like, I went to this church. They have a church here in, in Rancho, too. I'm like, is it Alpha Omega? She's like, yeah, that's the one. I'm like, yes. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, God. You've encouraged, you've put, you've put the spirit in her to um, encourage her to go to church. And just hearing that, like, again, it made my week. And just, it gave me more faith in God. Like, because I had, I did pray for some, you know, for her to find church eventually. And she did. And I was so happy to, to hear that. She went to Bible studies with her, minute, her pastor there. And just encouraging her friends to go as well. And. And that was like the best part of the month, this month. Uh, this happened, yeah, the beginning of this month when I talked to her. And yeah, that, that's one I wanted to share. And I just thank God for like just encouraging that into her life as well and planting that seed. So thank you.
I keep hearing, go Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Be courageous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I do thank the Lord for being here. I thank the Lord. Um, just he is so, so good to me. I can't even express all the things that he's done this year, just this year. And um, oh goodness. I thank him because he's been so so real in my life and he's been directing my path and sometimes I don't even get a chance to ask him he just directs me <laughs> and I'm so glad about it um, this has been a, a very um, it's been a heart year because I lost three uh, family members but um, they were ready to go home. One was 70, 80, and 94. <laughs> so they had lived a long, prosperous life. And the Lord had blessed them through the years, bountifully. <sighs> that was just one thing. And I thank the Lord, even as um, we've gone through and we've been working with um, Arise. <clears throat> uh, my, my heart is there. Uh, it's my daughter's um, program that the Lord has given to her. But I get a chance to talk to each and every parent um, many times a year. And they tell me of the struggles and the things that are happening in their lives. So I, I'm praying for them that the Lord will meet the need and take care of whatever's going on. But it's, uh, you feel it in your heart because you don't want to see anybody suffer or go through things. But that's life sometimes, so we have to take it one step at a time and know that we're not in charge. God is in charge. And he will take care of it, no matter how it looks. So sometimes he tells me to take my eyes off what I'm seeing and know that he's working. And I might not see it, but they can feel it. So I just thank the Lord for that and pray for me. God is good. All right, I think half of us won, <laughs> and half of still. Um, we we're gonna have ten more minutes of sharing testimonies. Um, so if you haven't shared it, and you feel like when is the lot next time? You know, who's gonna go next? Maybe after this person, after that person. Just go. My name is Karen, and um, I think God has just done so many good things this year, and every day I've taken it quite, I'm not, I'm used to it. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, of course God will show up today, but I think um, it's just the way he blessed me in relationships and with my coworkers, like, I actually enjoy the people that I work with, and I know that's not a guarantee, like, you know, it's... And I spent most of my life working. So it's just God is just so faithful in the boring, routine parts of life. Yes. And I'm really grateful for that. And as a person for the past two years, like I'm, I've been at Life as One for 10 years. And then I have to move out. I moved out to Gardena and I was exposed to different types of churches. 
and I was so mad. I was like, life as one is the way to do church, and that's it. And I was like, everything else, mm -mm. So I, I, like, God is so patient with me to deal with my bias and, like, teaching me to just to read his word more and just take joy in him when life is just kind of boring and, you know, go to work, cook, laundry. Like, just know that I'm not waiting for the next spiritual high. Mm -hmm. I'm just finding delight in him when life is dull and trusting that he's doing something amazing that I cannot see. And I think, yeah. So I've just been growing in little ways and don't have a huge highlight. I mean, I have a lot of highlights, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it. Oh, that's a problem. He's just really good, and he's really patient. Yeah. So Amen. I'm really grateful for a patient God. Mm. Yeah. God is good, and he will do it again. <laughs> now it has moved to a let's go I can't say no to carols <laughs> okay um, well I guess the biggest I'm going to put my glasses on because everybody's blurry um, the biggest testimony I guess this year a lot of you know I got engaged in July and so um, thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, but God has been so good through just my relationship with my fiance Omar um, there's a lot of stuff throughout our relationship and in our individual lives and journeys that just made the idea of getting engaged and married really scary um, and really difficult. Um, and so the fact that we got here has been a miracle. Um, and I think the engagement was this big marker of how far God has carried us and how consistent he's been um, and how patient he's been with both of us. And um, I think through all our ups and downs of our relationship, he's been so steady. Um, and so when things got difficult or we slipped up or things just felt very weak, mm -hmm. um, he felt so strong. Um, and we were able to consistently find our footing um, because of that, because of how like steady and consistent and unwavering his love and faithfulness was. So um, yeah, so it was just a big reminder of that for me this year. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> Pastors. Pastors. Can I ask a question real quick, sir? Yeah. I just want to say one more thing. The Lord delivered me from insulin this year. I was a diabetic for 25 years. That's right. It was taking as much as 100 meters a day. And it said, what was it, September, I believe? September, my doctor's office said, no more insulin. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Praise the Lord. And one more thing. God is real when it comes to your marriage. My wife and I have really struggled this year with a lot of resentment and anger towards things and one another that we've been doing because we've gotten older and we are a little bit more difficult to do things for ourselves. But the one thing I found, I found out is that if you say that you love her enough, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. See, I love you. Even if you have to say it a hundred times a day, <laughs> it'll really make a difference. And if you are struggling for it in your marriage, God is real. Because we celebrated 41 years this year. <laughs> God is good, and he will do it again. Amen. Amen. All right, just because JP said we had to. No. Um, <laughs> Like some of you, I mean, it's just been a year of goodness. And so it was, I really was sitting there like, I don't know which one to choose. Um, but this is what I'll choose just based on what so many of you shared. And I know we're not supposed to give backstory. Um, but COVID was really hard as a church and as church leaders. And this church really went through a lot. And I think that there were times where we felt like, do we keep going? Like, this is just so hard. And hearing your testimonies today and what so many of you shared about this community and all of you, I'm just thankful for all of you. This 
I mean, I, I appreciate the credit to the leadership, but it's, it's all of you. It's the culture we together have created as a family that honors God and welcomes him in. And so I'm just so thankful. I mean, we celebrated 10 years this year, and so that in itself was an amazing, amazing thing. But what we have here and what's happening here, and, and I feel like the best is yet to come, I'm just so thankful for this. I'm thankful for this church family. I'm thankful for God's presence with us. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Um, it's really good. It's really good. So thank you. He will do it again. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and actually, uh, when I sat down to eat, and I started uh, talking to Evelyn, and then I just started actually sharing, just uh, telling how God was good to me this year regarding uh, finding a warehouse for me this year. And JP know all of that. And it was, uh, it, it, I, I used to have a warehouse of 1,200 square feet and for 17 years. And all of a sudden, the landlord, he changed the landlord, and then they wanted to raise the price. I just had a really good deal. And then the, with, the right, with the raise, it was going to go to almost double, which, you know, for me, wasn't sustainable. So I was really, um, I had a lot of anxiety about it because I had a lot of merchandise, and then I really don't want to pay more because the business wasn't, you know, really like uh, what it used to be. So I wanted to have something like under 1,000 square feet, which is kind of hard to find as a warehouse. So I was writing about it, but then I put in the prayer, I pray, and God did it. So I have a 800 square feet, and I was, I'm paying almost as I used to pay, and it's a great place. Um, it's a quiet place, and it's all insulated, so I really don't have to spend a lot of uh, electricity to run it. Yeah, so I really thank God for it because, yeah, I thought it was kind of impossible because I was looking all over. Yeah, I even consider a storage place, which, you know, I could get 800 square by getting two small ones, but then you wouldn't give me AC, you know, no air conditioning, no insulation, I couldn't work in it. Yeah, it was really a lot of hassle. So Jesus knew what I needed, and he, he made it happen. So I give all the glory to God. Thank you. Well, yeah, God is good. Amen. Um, can we have the worship team? Coming back up. Any last question? Like, oh man, I missed the chance. <laughs> Cynthia? <laughs> <laughs> you, you pointed at Ashley. <laughs> but, uh, But this past year, I, oh, my name is Cynthia. For those of you that don't know me, I moved to Rancho at the beginning of this year. Um, I was praying the year prior. This is the only time I'll mention last year. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the year before, I was praying for a new job to move out of my parents' home um, after living there basically my whole life. And I did um, at the beginning of this year. And with the new job, um, these past 11 months has entailed a lot of training, observing, uh, failure. But even through that, the Lord has shown me his love and support through community, through my friends that live like so close to me now, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, it's just been an amazing year and I'm very thankful. It seemed like all of the doors were closing at the beginning of the year, but if God wills it, it will happen. And I'm just so thankful. Thank you. We'll do it again. Well, Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I know it's, it's been an amazing year, right? We, uh, we had ups and downs. 
I had ups and downs. Um, me and my wife Ellen, we had ups and downs. There were many times that we cr she cried, I cried. And she got mad, I got mad. I know, you know, all different kind of reasons and all different stories and you know all that stuff. Um, one thing that I'm thankful for, as many of you guys have shared, um, and I think Pastor Barb put it beautifully, um, is that we get to do this as family. Um, just because you're going through stuff doesn't mean that you're going through stuff alone. Just because you're you're having a great time and you know all that stuff, it does. You're you're releasing that to the family so that we can actually share the joy together. Um, and and I believe um, the good times and bad times and even the worst times that there are things that God is teaching us to strengthen us, um, to teach us and mold us for the things that He wants to put on us so that we can carry that. Um, you know, not just a short time, but a long time. Uh, God, because God is in the long, you know, long game. He's in, in His business is in eternity. Mm -hmm. So He's He's putting us in a place where we can actually carry the the glory that God wants to put on us um, for the eternity. Um, and I I believe um, that that's that's the most amazing things that God has done in this year, and He will do He will do it again. He will do it again. Mm -hmm. So why don't we, um, as a response to everything that's been shared and everything that you haven't actually shared but you want to share, it, just let us bring it all together as a worship uh, with a responsive song. <coughs> Is that okay? So right. worship team. Yeah. Now I give you everything 
Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, we sing all my life, oh, yeah. and all my life you have been faithful.